Good evening, First United Methodist. We're so excited to be here. My name is Laura Kazor. No, it's a kind of a tricky, <laughs> tricky last name. In case you're wondering, I always share this little tidbit. It means male duck in Polish, in case you were wondering what it meant. But we are so excited to be here this evening. Uh, we, Scott and I, we flew in early this morning from Nashville. We love the Columbia Airport. That is a great airport. It was really, I love it when you can just walk right off the plane and there were no crowds and I was like, this is my kind of airport, it was awesome. And the rest of the band, they drove in. Uh, we, who is the family that's hosting? Can you stand up? Yeah. So what we've, yes. They are hosting half of the band. Tim and Katie Gordon. Thank you very much. <laughs> And so what I've heard so far is, the food is amazing. <laughs> yes. And so they stopped, I guess they had stopped before they got to the house and wished that they hadn't because they wanted to have a really full belly to eat all the delicious homemade pizza, which I heard all about, including all the toppings and everything. So thank you so much for graciously hosting us. We're just so blessed to be here tonight. Tom and Amy Strother are long time friends of mine. Amy was actually one of the very first people that I met when I moved to Nashville in 2006. We got uh, connected by John Carter Cash, who Amy knew the family really well. And I was doing a little, uh, like a little EP with John Carter, was recording it. And he said, you know what? There's this gal that she's a super talented songwriter and a great person, and I think you guys would be friends. And so he connected us, and that was back in 2006. And we've been friends ever since, praise God. And she met Tom, they got married, and uh, sadly they moved to Missouri. But you guys got them, and you have the, the blessing of have, having them here in your church and a part of your church family. So, yes. Which is wonderful. So we're going to start off the evening uh, singing some worship songs together. Hopefully they're familiar songs. If they're not, we'll certainly have the words up so you can follow along and sing with us. Uh, and after the worship segment, we're going to go into some original songs, most of which that Amy and I actually co-wrote together on my latest album, which we released in 2015. So we really hope that this evening is a blessing for you. Rex, you good? iPad ready? Okay. If you would just stand with us, I'm going to pray before we worship together to start off the night. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of the body of Christ, or that we can travel from all over the country, we can come together, and yet we are united in you. Our different backgrounds, our different stories, Father, none of that matters. It all falls to the ground as we come together and worship that we are your children. Lord, we want you to be honored by our praise. Father, we ask that you would come and meet us here in such a tangible and real way, that we would feel your presence, that would hear, we would hear you speak into our lives. Father, we thank you that you are a speaking God, and you want to meet us here today. And Lord, thank you again for this opportunity to worship you. We pray this in Jesus' name. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. How the sweetest of us When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come from 
Who? 
name it is. Amen. I know there's been moments in my life where I couldn't say anything else except Jesus. 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 What a powerful and amazing name. The only name that delivers, that heals, that frees. And it's a blessing to be worshiping him with his people. Amen. This next song, Amy and I wrote it together of you know, I, I moved to Nashville in 2006. Um, there were certain periods along the journey, you know, where I probably didn't make the best decisions, you know, as a young 20-something. Uh, and I, you know, had a moment, really, in my life where um, I was done with all of that, you know. I was done with those decisions those friends, those paths that, you know, I was going on, and I just uh, remember uh, in my apartment just falling on my knees and saying, Lord, you know, that's it, you know, it's you and me together forever, and so this song is, kind of speaks to that a little bit, is when you have this moment uh, where you're like, you know, I've, I've done, been other places, I've looked for love and acceptance in other places, and I know the only place that I can find it is with you. You come to that moment of realization and that, that recommitment. And then you look back on all the periods of time when maybe you weren't walking with the Lord and you realize that he was there the whole time too. And you see his presence in those, in those moments as well. And you just realize that he is our forever savior. He's with us. You know, I committed to him as a small child. I recommitted to him as a young adult. And I will serve him forever. And he's always with me. And it's a song that celebrates that. I've been everywhere but in your arms I used to hear your voice but I'm too far away Thought I'd do this alone Thought I knew where to go Now I know I don't If I've ever needed you it's now Gotta get back to you Starting today, I want you to stay in my heart always, forever, forever, forever stay, forever, forever always. Every lonely valley you were there Carried me when I thought no one cared Looking back I can see You kept your promise to me When you said you'd never leave
That song is also, I have a three-year-old son. His name is Samuel, and um, he can kind of operate his CD player in his room, you know, so he'll go in there. And that song is the first song on the album, and it's pretty much with his attention span, the only one that he, you know, listens to. So he refers to that as Mommy's Song. So I have to sing oh. to that. I have to sing it every night. No matter who puts him to bed, it's my husband or me. I have to hear Mommy's Song, you know, so I get in there and just warms my heart oh. so much. So... This next song is called You Know, also written by Amy and I. Amy, do you have anything to share or interject about this one in particular? Um, hmm. <laughs> I think I'm remembering something about it, like, um, like it was, was this the one where we sat down and I had like a chorus mm -hmm. that had nothing with it? Yes. <laughs> and you were like, hey, I've got this idea. I kind of want this song to be about this. And I was like, well, I have a chorus, but that's all I've got. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> about, and you know, again, we were, still are, you know, well, this was, I think we wrote this one maybe in 2013-ish, so a while ago, four years ago or so, and still just trying to find our way. And so this song is really about just trusting God. He knows. We're going to follow him. He knows where we're going to end up, and uh, that's what this is about. So unprepared I'm not sure why you brought me Wondering how you could work through me But you know, you know All I need is just to follow serve a God who knows? Amen. I sure am. That's for sure. This is a super fun song to sing. Amy is a, I don't, do you guys know what a talented songwriter Amy is? Do you know? So, and it, another thing about Amy, I'll like prop her up here too. Amy knows everybody in Nashville, like pretty much. Yes, she really does. 
I remember when Tom, when Tom, wouldn't you agree with me, Tom? She was like the networker extraordinaire, and it was like, like what is the eight degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon? It's kind of like that with Amy. And it was amazing to see, and she has so many wonderful relationships there and so many people that love her, and such a talented, talented, talented lady. I know, it's amazing. This was a really fun song to sing um, and to write. And we, we did some changes to it in production, so it's a little bit different. The chorus, we kind of changed around a if little. If I mess it up, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the even... way we wrote that. <laughs> it is actually a little bit different, yeah. But, uh, but m most of the, the meat is definitely still there. Uh, and this one, I always kind of picture being on a roller coaster, and sometimes life is like a roller coaster, right? We don't know which way we're going, and, uh, but the final hook of the song is, well, it wouldn't take much faith if the path was straight, right? And it wouldn't if it was just, okay, this is the way we're going and we never have any deviations, but sometimes in life we deviate. And that's, I feel like in my life, when I have those deviations, I am so close to the Lord. I, I feel him so close in those moments when I'm just clinging to him for guidance. I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I know that he's with me. And so uh, that's what this one is. One, two, three, four. I think I finally figured out how to get there now. Where I'm meant to be. to be afraid Even with the curves day by day I'm making my way Twist and turn Live and learn Wouldn't take much faith If the path was straight If the path shaking the cobwebs off a little bit. <laughs> so I've, uh, this is the first time that we've, I've been out singing in about two years, believe it or not. So I had a, another baby last year. It was a really complicated pregnancy, so I was on like modified bed rest pretty much the whole time. So I could do nothing except just sit there. So I uh, couldn't sing, couldn't travel, and uh, now uh, she's nine months old, doing great, uh, and uh, we're kind of getting back at it. So it's great to be back. Restore Me. So the next, uh, this is actually the title track of the album. Um, 
again, you know, when you're in an industry where um, there's lots of, you know, criticism from all sides, some positive, some negative, and you have to process that all the time, sometimes it can really, you know, beat you up. I would say a lot of us, all of us on stage have been there, beat up at various points in time, and in any facet and area of our lives, I'd say that's true. Uh, and really, so this song is about going into the presence of God where only He can restore us. We can't get that restoration from praise and adoration from men. We can only get it at the feet of our Father. And uh, that's been such a profound message that I've been preaching to myself, you know, over the years. Time for a joke. Fill it in. Yeah, right. There it is. since before I had kids. Can anybody else relate to that? <laughs> yes. I'm like, man, I know it's in there, but it's like not, not firing in all cylinders when I try to retrieve the information. But thankfully, they uh, both sleep. That's good. So I have a three-year-old and nine-month-old. They both sleep, you know, 12 plus hours a night, which is pretty awesome. So when that, when that started happening, I felt like a new person, and my brain was functioning marginally better, like maybe 20%, but still not fully there. So this, this next song, You Make Me Brave. You know how it's funny, sometimes the Lord goes before us. 
So we write songs that we don't know how important they'll be to us or how they'll minister to us later down the road. So my, I mentioned my son a couple times. So Samuel, he was born with a large hole in his heart, which we didn't know about until two days after he was born. And so the doctor, you know, came in and said, I hear a murmur. And we're like, oh, okay, what does this mean, you know? So then seven days later, we took him to the cardiologist and they did the echo and she said, well, he's got a really large hole and it's not going to close on its own without surgery. You know? So I was just sitting there. My husband was actually working. I was there with my mom and we just went, Wah! you know, we were just like sobbing, these tears, you know. And so every month we would go to the cardiologist for weigh-ins and they would check us when your heart's not working 100%, your breathing is more labored, it's harder to eat, to get calories, and you're not growing as much. So about six months, you know, he was on the growth chart, but barely, it was like 3%, you know, for weight. So he was this little guy and um, he went, we flew him, we went up to, we didn't fly actually, we drove to the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia and we kind of did some research on this surgeon and he had his heart surgery. And it was a wonderful success. You know, it was completely healed up. He just has to go annually for checkups. The doctor just checks on him and no restrictions on activity and anything like that. But I can just, I can still feel the feeling, some of the anxiety and angst and just, just that overwhelming feeling as we were driving up there, right? We're like, okay, we're driving and from Nashville to Philly, because I'm originally from Pennsylvania too. Um, so it's about 14 hours, you know, we're in this car and we're driving and I just had this song like on repeat, you know, in my earbuds, you make me brave. It's like, I have to be brave. I have to be brave. You know, I have to get through this. I'm going to get through this. And the only person who's going to get me through this is the Lord. And it's kind of sounds weird, but we actually, and Kelly and I, my husband, Kelly would say that we look back on that time, that very hard, difficult time, but it's sort of, it was a very, like almost fondly. It's weird to say that because God was so present and his presence was so tangible through the hospital stay, everything. It was just like, it was just, I just felt his presence go before us and I knew that he was making us brave. And so this song has taken on a whole new meaning well, you know, such a different meaning than before. You know, who knows what circumstance I was, re you know, writing about at the time. It probably was nothing, you know, in comparison to that circumstance, right? But God went before us, and, um, and so this song has a whole new meaning for me now. And it's called You Make Me Brave. circumstance you are stronger than what's pressing in on me you are healer only you restore you are bigger I can trust you you are my help when I am weak you hear my cry
We don't always understand. We don't always understand suffering. Am I right? We try to reason through it in our rational mind, and that is usually a very futile task. Uh, but this song is a, a, a proclamation that regardless of the suffering that we're experiencing, we know that God is good, we know that he loves us, and that ultimately he has a plan for our lives in the midst of our suffering. I, Amy and I, this is one of the first songs that we wrote actually for this project, and it was a friend of yours who had just recently experienced a loss in a pregnancy, and that was what, Remember? And I have something to say about that. Okay, I'm going to testify it. right here. <laughs> <laughs> so the friend we wrote this about, she, she I, I forget what it ended up being like. I don't know. You fertility, um, fertility geeks out there will kind of know what I mean when I say the RH factor and like something was up. So um, they were having the hardest time. She miscarried. I don't know, probably um, between five and seven times, Gosh. I think. They tried for over, um, over four years, um, yeah, to, to have kids, and they now have two. Like, not only did God give them that one child, they were like, oh my gosh, this is it, oh my gosh, we're finally pregnant, oh my gosh. Like, they actually had another one, um, totally totally healthy pregnancy and everything. So God is good. Praise He's God. faithful. Yeah, praise God. And I, we were, so we were talking about that, and yes, that's, that deserves a hang clap, for sure. Uh, and, but we were, we were really wrestling with that as we were discussing, uh, you know, as we went down the, the songwriter's journey and talking about things that, that were on our heart and mind, and it's like, what do you do with that? You know, what do you do with, and they were believing people, and they're experiencing the suffering, and how do you process this, and how do we, you know, how do we as the body of Christ come around someone who's experienced the suffering that we have no explanation for, and how do we show the love of God to them? You know, and how do we encourage them? And so that's really what this song came from, is that this is meant to be that encouragement for someone who's experiencing suffering of all kinds. Little hands, little feet No explanation Just wasn't meant to be But hold on to the promise That everything, even this Has a purpose somehow Keep on believing He is good in all things We don't know Still true. 
of working with a producer named Ian Eskelin, really awesome guy, and he's worked with a lot of, a lot of artists that you've probably heard, heard of, and um, he's really a good, also a very talented songwriter and a great producer, and w when I was playing the song for him the first time, there was a line, uh, it was, every time we're sinking, when our hope is fading, uh, something about, oh gosh, what was the original line, Amy? He knows our suffering. Anyway, we liked the line, but Ian, he thought that it was like, like way too heavy, you know? He's like, man, this whole song, he's like, I need, so he put in that, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us, and I loved that addition too, because like, you know what, that was such a great reminder, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us, so. Anyway, okay, this is the last original song um, we're gonna do tonight, uh, Rain Down, uh, and this is a praise song. We jokingly refer to the jungle toms of praise because we get the, <laughs> the drums really going on this one. So if you want to stand up and sing with us, I know you don't know the song, but you can stand and uh, we'll um, close with this song. Um, after this song, we are going to uh, take a love offering, um, uh, which is to help cover the expenses of bringing in the band. And uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you having us for uh, being here. Uh, I will, I also want to introduce everyone in the band too, uh, so that you get to know them a little bit as well. On my left is Rex. Thank you. Behind me is Scott. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll brag on Scott a little bit. So Scott just got off tour with Carrie Underwood. I know. So he uh, <laughs> traveled the world with her as her band leader, keyboardist. Not well, band, band leader, leader but as her keyboardist. Okay, uh, which is an awesome thing. So we were so amazed and proud when we got that call that you know he got that gig. So it was great. Behind me is David rocking out on the drums. Blake. Blake is playing on the bass. The first time playing with Blake tonight, and it's been such a pleasure getting to know him. And then, of course, our beloved Amy on the acoustic singing harmonies like a pro. All right, let's sing Rain Down. There's no one like you You formed the light and divided 
service and I did hear someone pray for rain so that has a different I said well this this song has brand new meaning to me now after being in Jefferson City so praise God okay uh, you can be seated we're gonna watch a, a quick video as we do the love offering and um, that will conclude uh, actually our evening tonight um, and I one one and oh Sorry, Tom, real quick. Just wanted to say, please uh, come and see me. Actually, I'll make this announcement after this. We'll watch the Love Offering video now. Okay. Do you know God? Do you know God as what? Who? What does he do for you? Why is he interested in us? Why would he ever have the time of day to listen to my prayer? Who am I? compared to God, the creator of the universe, the Alpha and Omega. It's a big thought. Um, for me, God is everything. For me, there were many times in my life where I did not have peace in my life and seeking the answers to many questions. And of course, being born without limbs, I asked God, why did this happen? You know, we always talk to God more on a bad day. <laughs> we ask God for things, we thank God for things, but do you get to know Him? Do you talk to Him apart from just asking Him for things? Because if I had a friend and I just called Him up when I needed Him, it's not really a friendship. Do you know that He is excited to hear from you? Do you know that you were on His mind before the earth began and He formed you in your mother's womb? That was such an amazing piece that I had at 15 years old to know that I finally have someone who's going to be with me through it all, who knows all my circumstances, who's bigger than my circumstances, not like my parents. My parents loved me. My parents were there for me. They were not going to leave me at all, but they couldn't change anything and they couldn't heal my heart, but God did. How cool is that, that He loves me so much that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. Who am I that God would ever want to even talk to me, let alone let His Son die for me? Jesus Christ, He died for my sins. But John 3.16 says God came and saved the world. He rescued us by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. In verse 17, it says Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save us. 
And when the world thinks, well, oh, well, Jesus is now the only way, the truth and life. Yeah, it's because he is the only one who died for our sins. He is the only one who claimed that he was God in the flesh. He was the only holy one. He was the only one who faced the devil face to face and won. He was the only one who could raise himself from the dead. And when I believe in God and I receive him as my Lord, and get to know him as my friend. That same Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit, will raise me up from the dead. How cool is that? I'm not gonna die. I may take my last breath here on earth, but I have confidence in him, not only for salvation, but for comfort, for strength. And I can actually talk to him. I might be good to you, but compared to God, who's Nick Boyichich? No one. I might be good compared to some other people, but how good is good and how bad is bad? That's why we bring out the Bible and say, okay, let's not compare ourselves to each other, but let's compare ourselves to God. Well, if we do that, we got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> if you think that having no arms, no legs is a problem, not knowing God is a bigger problem. And I want you to know that it's not too late. Yeah, tomorrow is not promised, but you have today to say, hey, you know what, God, if, if you're up there and you have a plan for me, I want to know what that plan is. And the beautiful thing about knowing God is knowing what He says, knowing what He says about how much He loves me, about how He'll never leave me, about no matter how many times I fail, He still loves me and I'm under construction every day. And Nick fails God. But God's grace is sufficient as long as I hunger and strive to know Him more. And it's not this to-do thing, it's a love thing. I love God and God loves me. And as we spend more time with each other, I fall in love with Him more and more every day. The most exciting thing that I can ever do today is to know something more about God's love for me and my family. He can give you faith to believe this. If you ask Him for faith, He will actually give you faith. Faith is not a gift that's earned. Faith is a gift that's given. He loves you so much. And more than anything today, I want you to know God. I was... Uh getting my hair done at the salon and my uh, hairstylist had just found the Lord and in doing so he then bought all these books that he just keeps you know, around his salon all the time for all of his customers and I was sitting there, this was right after my son was diagnosed with a heart defect and I saw Nick Vucicic's book called Life Without Limits and so I was sitting there right having like the biggest pity party ever for myself that we were going through this. And then I read his book, I was totally convicted. And giving that perspective is here is a man who was born without arms or legs, and God is using his life in such a mighty and powerful way to go and travel. He has a really pr profound, powerful ministry where he travels the world and he shares the gospel. He has uh, does lots of crusades, and it just totally just changed my perspective, and, and I... Uh, I was just floored by that. And about uh, maybe two months ago, yeah, some beginning of July, I was out in California. I was there visiting some of my girlfriends from college, and I see Nick. We were at the Ritz Carlton at Half Moon Bay. He was the keynote speaker for a big like economic conference that they were having, Christian Economic Forum, actually, a big conference out there. And there he was. He was just sitting there by himself. And so I walked over to him. And I sat there at the table and we chatted for like 20 minutes. I shared how his story profoundly affected my life, how it got me through one of a really, really dark day, a really difficult day. Uh, and it was such a blessing. And so when I saw that video, I just wanted to share that, share his story, uh, because it really does help to have perspective, right? And to see that here is a man with no arms and no legs serving God joyfully. And I'm sure he has difficult days, just like we all do, just like we all do. Uh, but what an encouragement and a blessing. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for participating. I am going to be out at the table. I have a couple CDs. Um, the, the 
Restore Me is the most of the music that we did tonight. There are a couple other albums that are some older ones, but it's a good thing I don't try to sing those because if I can't remember the words for the recent one with my brain fog, then there's no way that I can remember those other CDs. So I spared you guys for sure. But I'll be out there, so please stop and see me. Thank you so much. God bless you, and have a wonderful evening.